Hello everyone. What you are seeing here is an old washing machine motor. And in this video, we are going to try to transform this motor into an electric power generator. The rotor is this central structure here, which rotates inside the motor. I am not going to do this with this one, because if it doesn't work, I can reassemble my motor and it will work again. I am going to do this with this other rotor here, which is from another motor that is broken. And I am going to try to do the following. I am going to try to fix these neodymium magnets inside this rotor. I am going to make a cut here where it is marked. I am going to try to start with two magnets. Later maybe I will try with four. The cut will be made like this. I am not going to leave the magnet parallel to the shaft. It will be slightly inclined. Because this will reduce the vibrations when the rotor is rotating. Well, now we are going to have to cut all this here. So we have finished cutting the rotor core. We got all these pieces here. It wasn't easy. I even have cramps in my arms. But here it is. Now, what we're going to do is take four of these neodymium magnets and we're going to glue them here. In fact, we're going to attach them as best we can here. I was going to do it with just two magnets, but I saw that I'd get a better result using four. I already have the four magnets right here, right? So why not use them? Well, here it is. I attached the magnets and they ended up in this arrangement. North, north and south, south. As you can see, the symmetry was a little strange. It wasn't symmetrical in relation to this structure. The magnets were displaced down here. For the following reason, the base of this axis has to coincide with the base of my stator, right? So it will be stuck inside, in that little hole and... The magnets have to be laterally coinciding with this structure here. In other words, it has to be passing in front of each of these coils here. So that's why the geometry is a little different here. Right? But it's because the magnets will coincide with the coils. Later I'll reinforce all of this with wire and epoxy putty. This is very firm. In fact, I had only glued it with super glue and I had to pull the magnets out of this structure twice to be able to reposition them. And it was very difficult to pull them out. This would be a square here. But I decided to cut these corners here and then I had to remove the magnets. Then it got stuck on the sides and then I had to cut it again here. So I had to remove it twice and both times it was difficult for the magnets to come out. Because it is a structure that will vibrate for several hours, perhaps several days if I am going to actually use it to produce energy. And under vibration, I may need to improve the fixation. So I will use epoxy paste and wire to hold everything together better. So our magnetic rotor is ready. It is here reinforced with epoxy paste and wire. And now we are going to place it inside our stator. Well, we need to be careful when placing this stator inside. So, I am going to assemble everything, and I will be back in a little while. And I said at the beginning that I would place the magnets slightly inclined so that there would be no jamming inside when they got too close to the stator. However, I chose to do something else. Since the magnetic flux of these magnets is very high, 
I chose to move the magnets further away, bringing them closer to the axis of rotation, which greatly reduced this jamming. The magnetic field of these magnets is intense enough for me to have a good amount of magnetic flux passing through each coil. So now let's do a test to see what voltage we can obtain and we will also check what electric current I will be able to obtain from this generator. In case anyone wants to know the characteristics of the motor we used, here they are. So let's do our test. Let's see what voltage this generator can provide us. Connecting a drill to its shaft and we will produce a certain rotation. Let's put a multimeter here on its terminals. Well, I have three wires here. I will initially connect them to the first two. And let's see the voltage we can obtain. I will leave it here on the scale of up to 200 volts. Yes, it went beyond 200 volts, right? I will change it to the scale of up to 750 volts, yes. So with enough rotation, we can obtain up to 250 volts. This other connection here will probably allow us to reach the 110 volts, 120 volts limit. That's it. So it looks like we have a generator with excellent voltage here. And a rotation that I won't be able to determine, but it should be within the drill's rotation limit. Let me see if I can see it on the drill's label. No, there's no such information here. Well, I'll owe you that information. Well, let's do the following. Now I'm going to connect this connector here where I have the red, yellow and white wires in the same sequence as there. There are two connectors here that were for connecting a capacitor when the motor was being used in the washing machine. So, let's use these three wires here and let's try to determine if we have enough electrical current for some practical application. I'm going to connect the yellow and red wires here, where we had obtained 220 volts. So here's yellow and red, and I'm going to connect one of these 70W incandescent bulbs and let's see if we can get a good brightness. So, we really have the power to be used in a practical application. If you're lucky enough to have a water source, a waterfall, or even a stream with a relatively strong current that allows the installation of a water wheel, it can allow us to use the mechanical energy of the waterfall to transform it into electrical energy and use it in a useful application, right? With the 75W that I got here by turning on this incandescent bulb. I could turn on all the 15 watt bulbs here in my house because they are LED bulbs. Let's see if we can turn on two of them. I'm going to use it. The other connection. Now I have a blender here. Its power is 250 watts and we're going to test it too. So let's try to turn on the blender and our 75 watt light bulb at the same time.
So guys, I'd like to say that I'm very happy with the result we got here. Because I thought I would be able to obtain a high voltage, but when we were to use it in a practical application, like turning on a light bulb or turning on a device with a little more power, it would disappoint us. However, the result was surprising. We were able to obtain enough voltage and power for practical use, right? If I had the conditions to put this in a water wheel or a windmill, right? Or in a pinwheel, I could probably use this energy. Store it in a battery and later use an inverter to transform it from 12 volts to 110 volts or 220 volts for my use. In a water wheel, the application would already be direct. I could use the power generated directly by our generator for application in a residence. So with a 600W motor I'm sure I could generate more than 300 watts by powering this lamp and the blender. So, I consider that, for being just a makeshift thing made here in the backyard, it's a very good generator. So that's it, folks. In the next one, we'll see if I can find a power source to really use this generator. So that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.